May God bless you all. Today we're going to continue the prefaces and title of the Song of Songs by presenting, first of all, the contribution of Honorius of Autun. Sacred scripture is interpreted and understood in four ways, historically, allegorically, tropologically, and anagogically. This is expressed by the table of the presentation of, break, of bread in the ark. Exodus 25, 29 following, which is supported by four feet. The ark represents the church, in which service is rendered to Christ. The table is sacred scripture, upon which bread is presented, that is, the food of souls. The four feet are the four kinds of meaning, that is to say, history, when the thing referred to is narrated as it happened, Allegory, when the thing referred to is expounded with reference to Christ and the Church. Tropology, when it is applied to soul and spirit. And anagogy, when it is understood of the celestial life. In his vision of God, when he foresaw the entire future state of the Church, Ezekiel saw, among other things, a wheel in the midst of a wheel. This wheel had four faces, and the spirit of life was in the wheels. Ezekiel 1, 16, 20. This wheel is sacred scripture. The wheel within the wheel is the new law hidden within the old. The four faces are the four senses, which is to say the historical, the allegorical, the tropological, and the anagogical. In history, the thing referred to is indicated, considered as it has taken place. In allegory, on the other hand, the interpretation of words is weighed. In tropology, the analogies between things that have taken place are searched out. In anagogy, the likeness of things is pondered. For example, it is history that Solomon is called peaceable and that he built a temple in seven years. It is allegory that Solomon is called peaceable and that he is Christ. Jerusalem is the vision of peace, and is the church, which Christ made as a temple for himself, by the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. It is a matter of tropology, accordingly, that just as Solomon constructed the temple out of planks and stones, so too each believer makes in his soul a temple for God, out of good works and the examples of the saints. On the other hand, it is a matter of anagogy, that just as Solomon made the temple in Jerusalem out of precious stones, so too Christ establishes a temple in the heavenly Jerusalem out of living stones, that is, out of all the elect. Now we're going to see the contribution of origin. The point has now been reached at which we must speak of the title of the Song of Songs, the expression Song of Songs is similar to what are called Holies of Holies in the passage about the Tent of Witness, Exodus 30, 29, and to what, the book of Numbers, and to what, and to what in the Book of Numbers are mentioned as Works of Works, Numbers 4, 47, and to what in Paul are called Ages of Ages. Romans 16, 27. Here, however, our job is to inquire what the songs are of which this one is said to be the song. My conclusion is that they are the songs that in times past were sung by prophets or by angels. For the law is said to have been ordained by angels at the hands of a mediator, Galatians 3, 19. Therefore, all the songs the day pronounced were preludes sung by the friends of the bridegroom. The song, however, is the one song that the bridegroom himself was to sing as a marriage him, just as he was about to take his bride. In it the bride no longer desires the friends of the bridegroom to sing to her. Instead, she wants to hear the words of the bridegroom, now present with her, and says, Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. Justifiably, then, is the song ranked above all other songs, for the rest of them 
which the law and the prophets sang, were sung while the bride was still a little thing, who had not yet entered upon the beginnings of maturity. But the song is sung to her as one already grown up, truly strong, and able to receive a husband's power and the perfect mystery. That is why it is said of her that my perfect love is one. Song 6, 9. And to conclude, we're going to say something about Gregory of Nyssa's contribution. Let us then come with the Holy of Holies, that is the Song of Songs. For from this superlative form of this expression, we learn that there is a superabundant concentration of holiness within the Holy of Holies. And in the same way, the exalted word promised to teach us mysteries of mysteries by the agency of the Song of Songs. For though there are many songs within the divinely inspired teaching, through which from the great David and Isaiah and Moses and many others, we are instructed in noble thoughts about God. From this title we learn that the mystery contained in the Song of Songs transcends these songs of the saints by as much as they stand apart from the song of profane wisdom. Human nature can neither discover nor entertain anything greater than this for purposes of understanding. This is why, moreover, the most intense of pleasurable activity, I mean the passion of erotic love, is set as a figure at the very fore of the guidance that the teachings give, so that we may learn that it is necessary for the soul, fixing itself steadily on the inaccessible beauty of the divine nature, to love that nature as much as the body has a bend for what is akin to it, and to turn passion into impossibility so that when every bodily disposition has been quelled, our mind within us may boil with love, but only in the spirit, because it is heated by that fire which the Lord came to cast upon the earth. Luke 12:49. Father God, we thank you for these last three con contributions, which conclude the preface and, pre and the title of the Song of Songs. Help us, first of all, to go into your word historically, allegorically, tropologically, and analogically. Help us to discover that your, work, that your word is works of works, and also that your word is also holy of holies. And help us to discover this in the appreciation of the Song of Songs. We ask this Father in Jesus' name, in Jesus' blood, in the Holy Spirit. And may God Almighty bless you and protect you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.